Using shop tools to repair a winch on a Ford Ranger. William Hovey Smith, 2019. I'm the author of Extreme Muzzle Loading and am a hunter. Consequently, I take my vehicle out in the woods. And when it breaks, we have to do something about it. I'm also the author of Create Your Own Job Security, which is a book that prompts individual entrepreneurship and states that, yeah, uh, you should have several little businesses running all on the side all the time and tell you how to do exactly that to earn extra income anytime you want it. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And we have some trauma in regards to our winch over here that most people carry all the time on the front of their trucks. Well, I don't do that. This winch is detachable. And I only put it on the truck when I use it. It's also reversible. I can mount it on the front of the truck or I can mount it on the back of the truck. I can also operate it independently of the truck as long as I have room enough to connect it with about an eight foot power cord. So we can do all that with this winch. Consequently, as you will see, uh, when we have a close-up on it, it's not the usual wet, muddy, half-rusted thing that you see on most vehicles. It's in pretty good shape. However, this was one of the less expensive winches, and it had a basic design problem. The mounting for the control box on top of the winch, which sits on top of the drum, was very weak and it was held by only a couple of screws coming in from the bottom. Those screws loosened and ultimately fell out. My expedient repair was duct tape. <laughs> yep, got that done and that lasted a little while. But then uh, this spring I started to pull some trees with it, which I commonly do and the cable was having problems coming in and out of the spool. Very unusual. So I reeled the cable off the winch to take a look to see what was going on. And as you can see, there's a piece of jagged metal from the bottom of the control box that is hanging down like this and binding up the cable as it's spooling in and out. Well, since I'm a turkey hunter, and we get out there in the woods and sometimes some dark and desperate places, and I don't have four-wheel drive, yeah, I need my winch. So we're going to go about fixing that. This winch weighs uh, something like 120 pounds when it's spooled up. So I'm working on it here in my carport rather than taking it inside the shop. But you can see this piece of metal here. And yeah, you can see how this would catch on the table and bind it. I can see better now how this was attached. This plate here is connected with screws from underneath. But there was no lock washer on it, so this is why uh, they came loose. And here is it's matching on the other side, and it's lost this little plate here. And the plates went under this piece of metal here that's been caught and bent over here, as you see. So instead of cutting it off, I'm going to see if I can bend it back more nearly into place. The size of these jaws here is preventing me from bending it back any further. So I'm going to go ahead and take that entire bottom plate off. And that way I'll be able to work with it better inside the shop. So I'm using this small little ratchet set to uh, take off this nut. And it needs actually uh, the backing. 
and the screwdriver for it to come. I've very nearly got it off, I think. Yep, there it went. At least here on the carport, any parts fall, I can find them. I have removed the plate, as you can see. Uh, the plate, fortunately, is not in itself bent. So that's still straight. We managed to get it out before it did any damage to that. All of the electrical stuff here is still very well and solidly connected. So there's no reason to do anything with that. All that's in good shape. All we have to do is just put it back in its box the same way it came out. Maybe easier said than done. So uh, we take this and we go inside the shop and see if we can get this plate here that's all bent up to look more nearly like that one. Now that we have it in the vise, We'll see what we can do about making this more nearly planar and cleaning it up generally. This is really some pretty flimsy stuff. Uh, yeah, it's working okay, but they really should have used a better material, I think. Now, if we can put it in the vice jaws, I believe we can make it more nearly planar. As the wrinkles are being taken out, it's straightening up. That is probably about as parallel as we're going to get it. Let's see what we got. Okay, it's still pretty wrinkled. All right. I'm working a part now that really wasn't between the jaws previously. <laughs> Still pretty wrinkly, but far better than it was. Don't know of any way to pull it out and level it in that direction. Now we're going to try to put a bend in it. We won't get it parallel to this plane yet but at least we'll have it bending on a line, and I think maybe with vice grips, I can take it all the rest of the way. Okay. Bend, guy. All right, that got it started. It's been threatening rain all morning, and I see it's finally arrived. I'm glad we got that outside stuff done. All right, I got that started. We have a wooden block here. We're going to apply a little pressure. Okay, now that's about as far as I want to go right now. So I'm going to have to make a piece to go under here to actually hold the two screws. This hemispherical abrasion circle here is an invitation for the cable just to get caught up in that again and do the same thing it did, open this. Uh, 
So I'm going to go ahead and take the angle grinder and just remove this section right here. That is thin, soft steel. Yeah. Should have used better stuff, guys. This is actually the piece that holds the control box onto the winch. And on the top of it, they have this aluminum plate right here that these screws are fixed to. Now this plate goes underneath here. And then this goes on either side of it and supposedly holds it on there. Well, as you saw, it had failed. It didn't work so well. Well, I have a piece of aluminum right here. So I'm going to cut another plate to fit this other side and try to position the holes as close, to, as, close as I can. I'm cutting off this edge because it's bent over this way. That's provided. Okay, so now that clears. So that's good. I'm using the file to clean up some of these sharp points and edges so that hopefully that cable will be less tempted to snag on something and start picking this thing up again. We went through our miscellaneous screws and we didn't find any self-threading screws but we did find some ordinary steel ones and these have a large enough heads to hold in this plate here plus they're long enough that I can use a lock washer so this looks like a good deal okay we've got our aluminum block in the vise on the drill press and so we'll see how that does <laughs> Okay, it's also straightening this piece of uh, material out, which is it should be. So, okay, that's doing good. Let's see how we did on the other side. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and put lock washers on here. Well, our screws are holding. Our plate here is bent down to more or less match this one. Uh, these are sticking up a little proud. So I'm going to take this in the grinder and I'm going to grind these edges off the top of this a little bit. So they won't be quite so abrasive against the cables. Because the cables actually scrape here from time to time as you can see. So we'll round that to make it a little easier passage. But uh, yeah. Uh, I think we're getting there guys. We've now attached both of the holding brackets onto the base plate. So, uh, yeah, we've got them. They're in pretty solid. So, even though that one's wear-worn, they have their new base on this one, and the original on this one, and we also installed some lock washers. So hopefully that will keep it on there a little longer. Although this is a very weak, weak retaining system. And stronger components could have made it better. Now we're going to be in the business of reinstalling that base plate onto the parts that contain the electrical component. So uh, there are bolts and nuts that need to go in. And these are small little tiny things, and I have ordinary size hands, even small. But, uh, 
there's a lot of fumble factor here. And this is just a frustrating job of relocating these holes, lining them up, and reattaching the nuts and bolts. So I'm going to be at this for a little while. And uh, I'm sure there will be numerous droppings of components and other bad words maybe said. But uh, we're going to get it done. Because the turkeys are out there this morning. Rain last night, so they're going to sleep in. Uh, they do that. If you have rainy, stormy weather, they may not come down to the down from the tree till 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. So there's no reason for me to be out there in the wet because the turkeys ain't down yet. So this gives me time to hopefully complete this and get everything reattached before I go out turkey hunting. We're getting all these little SOBs in there. There are four and I've got three in, but I've left them all loose so I can move the assembly around and center everything up. But you've got this nut and bolt, you've got a lock washer, and then you have two washers. Once I get a bolt through the hole, I'm using a little piece of duct tape to hold it there because I don't have three hands. And I'm using this magnet to, to hold it so I can hook the components around these electrical wires and get them in there. And then I'm taking the nut and see it and seeing if I can snake it in there and start a thread or two. There we go. It's on there. Now I can take the socket and strain it from the other side just temporarily. See if I can get it started. Yeah, it's starting. Just working it down further with a fingernail. Our screw assemblies have been waiting patiently in this gold pan for the final assembly of the control box. And so we have our screw and our washer and our lock washer. And I've already put in one on the other side. And now we can index and start the other two. And now all that remains is to run these screws in right here and that will reattach the control box to the rest of the winch. You don't want to over tighten these because that will tend to make them strip. Okay. Now that's on there. Since we had rain last night and our cables are wet and the winch is wet, I'm going to let everything dry out. And how did my four hour turkey hunting interlude go? And not one turkey seen, not one turkey heard, not one turkey feather found, nor even a turkey track. Hmm. Poor. But my witch stuff has had a chance to dry out. And now it's time to put it on the truck. Now that I've lined it up, you'll just do one lift and push it in, more or less in position, where I can put in a through bolt and attach it with a cotter key. I've hooked up the power cable, which is that red connection you see, and also the control box. So now we'll be able to spool the cable back on the winch itself. And I'll need to apply pressure, so I'm wearing gloves so I can actually guide the cable as it goes back on the winch. And this is a smoke test. 
like all good projects like this, yes, we'll need to see if it works. And we are about to do that. Okay, in. Here it goes. Okay, job done. For now, this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Not only am I the author of prize-winning outdoor books like Extreme Muzzleloading, which talks about turkey hunting, I also discuss turkey hunting and backyard deer hunting, how to take turkeys with crossbows with crossbow hunting, and also have an e-book series, and these books also contain information on turkey hunting with muzzleloaders. My new business book, Create Your Own Job Security, prompts individual entrepreneurship at any stage and any size business. If you need to start a little business to earn a little money on the side, okay, I'll tell you how to do that. If you want to start a business that's going to maybe bring you a billion dollars in 40 years or so, well, i tell you how to do that one too. For more information on Create Your Own Job Security, you can go to my website, which is given below. One reason I show all the steps in this process is for you to convince your doubting spouse that all this junk that you have in your shop is really worth having, including hanging on to some obsolescent stuff and spare parts, etc., etc., etc. For more information on my books, blogs, and nearly 700 videos, including a number on turkey hunting, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com, and also to the Hobie Smith YouTube channel. For more information on my business books, go to createyourownjobsecurity.com. And stay tuned to see how my turkey hunting season turns out. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.